I'm here at Tyne, an idyllic village within a village in the heart of the Cotswolds. It consists of a boutique hotel, a restaurant, a spa, a cookery school, a farm and the gardens. My brief was to follow the ethos of Tyne, which is a love of the land and nature. All of the gardens I've designed around the buildings are aimed to be outdoor rooms. So there's effortless connectivity between the inside and the out. This is the farmhouse and this has gardens at the back, west facing and at the front, east facing. And because we love to connect the inside and the out, when this new kitchen extension was put on, we made a sitting area both here so you can enjoy the evening sun and out to the front so you can have the morning sun. And that really makes a huge difference to the use of these really important spaces. We wanted to make a nice generous space, but we didn't want to make it too sparse. So we put in four baseless potted trees around us, these lovely amelanchia, which just give greenery and stop it looking all too hard. Behind me is the boule court or pétanque court, where the French have that wonderful game where you actually roll a ball along and the aim is to hit a little ball. And that's made of breed and gravel. And I think it's a wonderful material because it's gravel, but it's bound. So when you walk on it, even with very high shoes, they don't sink into it. You can ride bicycles on it, wheelchairs or whatever. And what I like about it is it looks quite soft, although it's a hard surface. I've edged it with a crenellated edge of Yorkstone slabs and I think that just helps to define it. And I've also put a low retaining wall around it. I've used the low part to be just random rubble walling in keeping with the whole of the farmhouse and the rest of it. But I put a new modern thick ashlar coping, sawn coping on the top to make it look a bit more modern. Again, mixing modern with old. The lawn I think is just a wonderful space, but I wanted just to egg it up a little bit. Now, stepping stones paths we have in many, many gardens, but you can really make them any width you like. You can make them of brick or stone or pebbles or gravel. You can make them of different patterns. And here I've done simple crosses with horizontals, but again, ringing the changes, making them individual, making them inviting. Um, I think it really adds just an extra dimension to otherwise a very simple lawn. The seats framed by the estate fencing, big chunky wooden seats with the spelliers around the back, are custom made seats obviously, and I do like to use custom made furniture. People always think that it's very expensive, but inevitably it's nearly always much less expensive than buying something off the peg. And also you can bring any amount of changes to the design. And gardens like to have their own identity, things that people remember. And if you've seen the same seat or arch or whatever in 101 different gardens, it really doesn't make the same impact at all. A bit of individualism is always good. So I think those seats work very well. And we put in the box balls at either end and I see they've now grown massively since I last saw them. We probably did this garden about six, seven years ago, something like that, and they've really bedded in. The lawn is actually a very simple space, but by having those seats and the path, it just lifts it. Not a lot of expense, but it just completely transforms it. Now, the front of the house is another element, and we did massive work to that. We changed the position of the drive. We made a more open part as you come up to the house with just simple meadows flanking the drive with topiary, orchard trees which we brought in and a hammockry. So that was all very relaxed and then you come into a more defined courtyard right up by the front door and that you can drive into to drop off your suitcases and then you pull your car back because we've got the all-important eating area to one side there. So we've tried to make it car free and make it more like a courtyard. The hammockry was fun to do because there were no trees in that garden at all. So I had to bring in some fruit trees, which I formed in a circle around the hammockry. And those obviously would not take the weight when they're newly planted 
of a big human being having had a lovely meaty lunch or dinner lying in them. So I actually put in metal posts tight up to the trunks, one on either side of the hammock, and I've fixed the hammocks to those. So they form a loose circle around a fire pit. The fruit trees are one of my favorite type of fruit trees. They're multi-stem medlars. So they have the wonderful spring blossom and then they have the extraordinary fruits with the calyx at the bottom that look a bit like a whippet's bottom. In the last 10 or maybe even 20 years, outdoor sofas have really revolutionized the way we use our gardens. And that's because as opposed to a garden bench, which you tend to sit on for a short while because it's pretty hard and pretty uncomfortable, you can lounge on a sofa all day after lunch. You have a nap on it, you can read on it. They're just so comfortable. And you don't have to make them of all weather rattan. Here, these are made of timber, bespoke timber, really chunky and quite wide. So really, if you haven't got an outdoor sofa in your garden, I think if you find one that you like or design one that you like, if you put one in or two even, or a couple of armchairs, you will really discover how your use of the garden totally changes. This is the garden for the cookery school at time. And this was the first commercial garden that I designed here. And I think it must have been about 12 years ago. When I was coming up for a theme for this garden, it seemed pretty obvious, culinary food plants. So that's what it is. The main star players are the olive trees, and these are grown on short legs, so they're dumpy little trees, because most of the buildings around here are just single story, so it brings the scale down. But they really work in making the space look much bigger than it really is, because I can't see from one end to the other. Vines, I put a big vine scrambling all over the pergola, lovely grapes hanging down. We've got rosemary, lovely evergreen plants, very aromatic. We've got artichokes and thyme, both prostrate and also the more bushy thymes. Very edible, very obvious palette to use, and I think it really pulls the scheme together. When I came to dividing up the actual spaces, how was I going to do it? That's always the most difficult part, but this fell into line very easily. It was just a flat space, pretty much, with a load of gravel and hardcore. So what we did is did a main entrance path up to the main doors, the centre quite wide, quite generous in scale, so it didn't feel pinched and mean. And then we had a big eating area under the pergola, so big groups of classes can sit and eat and chat together in the shade. Sometimes we put an awning over the top as well. And then I've got the little informal seating area, so two or three can just have private chats together. So everything in this courtyard is very straight rectilinear because it's a rectilinear space, but I do like to take people off the straight and narrow bit. So I've thrown in the serpentines. I've done serpentine curves flanking the pathway. And I love the serpentine because it's a very classical shape and I think it works brilliantly with straight lines, strangely enough. And I've egged it up by having the cloud food hedge in the box running along in a serpentine as well. As to palette and materials, I've tried to keep that quite restricted as ever. So I've gone for the green oak, which has faded beautifully over the 12 years or so. I've gone for the acid etched metal and this grey palette really bounces off light in the winter. And when you get the sort of grey dust bin lid days in England, when the skies are murky, the light is low, this metal really sings out and looks almost sparkly, which really adds a different dimension, I think. And then, of course, stone. Everywhere here in the Cotswolds, there's stone. So we've got stone paving and we've got some granite set as well. Terracotta. Terracotta and the acid etch metal and the dark green and the silver grey, it all is a good tone that themes well together. Then you come to the raised beds. I mean, it just seemed natural to put in raised beds so people cooking could go and just pick their own herbs. We've got lots of lemon verbena and an array of all different herbs that they can just sit on the edge of the raised beds, look at the herbs, discuss them, pick them and then go and use them. Again, all important structure 
And I think this garden in the winter has a very strong structure. And because all the buildings around it have lots of glazing, the interface between the two means that this space has got to look good as ever all the year round because it's really the picture postcard that you see from the building.